What happened to Angry Birds? No, really. What happened to Angry Birds? A game that was downloaded almost 50 million times with numerous sequels, even movie tie-ins. Now it's completely fell off and no one even talks about it anymore. What happened to it? Was it abducted by aliens? Because truly I have never seen a bigger fall off of a single franchise in my entire life. Well, today we're gonna find out the real reason why Angry Birds fell off. And surprisingly, it isn't Fortnite. Oh wait, there's a video on Angry Birds? Do you want to watch a video on Angry Birds? That could be kind of funny. I actually don't even know what happened to Angry Birds. I haven't heard that in years. I just, I, I, I just remember Flappy Bird. Angry Birds is now completely and utterly irrelevant. If you could travel back in time and tell this fact to somebody in the early 2010s, they simply wouldn't have believed you. Angry Birds was a true media empire with games, toys, movies, and more. The franchise was bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars. Analysts were- How many Angry Bird films are there now? Isn't there two? There is so much Angry Birds content, it, it is insane. Hang on, let's look at Angry Angry Birds film. You got Peter Dinklage in that? Why? Is Angry Birds 2 out? Yep, they actually did an Angry Birds- Oh wait, no, I don't think there was a film. Full movie. Oh no, there is. Movie 2, Jesus. Just actual cash cow. The iconic Red Bird seemed unstoppable, but now, the name Angry Birds is nothing but a distant memory. The I do not know anyone that plays Angry Birds. I, I, I just remember like having it on my iPod Touch when I was like 13. The year was 2003. Three students at Helsinki University in Finland Why is it always people in Finland? It's always people in Finland. Cruelty Squad is made by a Finnish guy. This game I'm... I'm trying to play through right now called Fear and Hunger. That is one of the weirdest, most depraved games I've ever played. That's done by a Finnish person. What is with Finnish people and video games? There, there is something there, man. There's something in the water. Decided to join a mobile game development contest. Despite stiff competition, the three won thanks to a game they created and later sold called King of the Cabbage World. This was a pivotal moment for the three young students. They realized that their burning passion I have an Angry Birds tattoo. Oh, we got a verified boy in chat. I have an Angry Birds tattoo on my right leg. I am so sorry. You could probably sue for damages for that, though, to be fair. I imagine you can get damages for that. And for creativity in gaming could lead to a seriously lucrative career. That's when they decided to go all in on a mobile game company, which they named Relu. Will I stream Fear and Hunger? I genuinely don't think I can because there's so much nudity and sex in that game and you can't censor it. There's no way you could censor it live because there's just so much uh, moving around on screen. I actually think I'll get a ban if I, if I stream it. And when I'm doing a video on it, I'm going to have to heavily censor it so much. I might reach out to the dev if possible and ask them if there's like a mod or something that will censor the stuff. I can't show it. Like the video is going to have to be heavily edited anyway decided to change the name of their company to Rovio, the Finnish word for bonfire. It made sense. I feel that's a very bad name considering the company is now in a massive downfall. There is a huge irony there. Please no Dark Souls references, guys. Come on. We're, we're, we're better than that. We're better than that. The following years were brutally difficult for the company. Remember, this, this is probably going to be a similar situation to Hello Games and No Man's Sky, where it's like they made a lot of games before No Man's Sky that just got like pretty mid reviews, like no one actually played it. And then with No Man's Sky, they had a banger. And then with this, they had a banger. Have you guys seen the picture of uh, Hello Games, No Man's Sky? This is the picture when it went gold. Uh, and <laughs> it's such an awful picture. It is such an awful picture. <laughs> It's like, what were they thinking? It looks like the Beyond Fried Ch Hang on. Look at this. Beyond Fried Chicken. These two gentlemen. There we go. Beyond Fried Chicken. They deleted that tweet, by the way. I love that at KFC is getting at Beyond Meat. Hashtag vegan fried chicken. I got to try something earlier this year. They're now in multiple US test markets. I hadn't stepped foot inside a KFC in over a decade, but I did for this. I'm asterisk blown away, asterisk. This will save so many chicken. <laughs> <laughs> this was all before the advent of the smartphone that we know today. Their bet on mobile gaming was a wild idea this early. This <laughs> resulted in the company making a whopping 51 games that all flopped. None of the games they created were- It is amazing with so many companies how they just put out so much slop before they actually get a banger. Really ...selling or had gained any serious traction at all. By 2009, this was basically Fortnite. Honestly, I think Fortnite is actually going down. Fortnite is kind of falling off now, right? I think in the next three years, you're going to have like a, a, a game that tops Fortnite. 
I think. Maybe five years. Nah, three years is probably too soon. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know anyone that still does Fortnite videos. All, all the YouTubers that did like exclusively Fortnite videos, they, they, they fell off. The only one I know that still gets decent views is, uh, I think McCreamy does all right. McCreamy still gets really good views. But it's it's like CSGO videos that like Fitz used to do uh, before he, he took a break. It's like they, they don't really do that well anymore now. That's why I don't really, I don't do gaming videos. Like I'll, I'll play a a video game when it comes out, but I, I wouldn't do exclusively a funny moments videos with subtitles and stuff because there's no point putting all that time and effort in if, if the turnout isn't that great. There's something in the algorithm that doesn't like those kinds of videos anymore. A light bulb went off. They had an idea for their 50 second game. Angry Bird. 50 second game. Imagine that. Imagine saying it's the 50 second game and yet the PS5 still has no games. No games, no games, <laughs> They loved the concept of birds that had no legs, so their only way of launching forward was with a slingshot. And best of all, the iPhone's touchscreen allowed for an engaging launching mechanic, as well as trajectory lines. The I like how all these games that bang, like, they're never original games. This was based off, I think this was based off a Flash game called Dead Tree Defender, I think. Dead Tree Defender. This was a game where like you try to knock down someone's platforms and stuff. And I think this game came out way before Angry Birds. But yeah, it's it's so genius how no game is ever original. They just refine something. It's like uh, Minecraft was based off a game called Infiniminer. I think it was Infiniminer. There you go. Yeah. So this game came out before Minecraft and it, it, it just, it's Minecraft, but it's ugly. That's why it didn't do well. But then uh, Minecraft is the same thing. You've even got the oars and stuff. And then it did well because it looks good launched their 50 second title with angry birds and well it didn't immediately take off but six months later the momentum and hype had built to the point where the angry birds oh my god i remember like getting my first ipad when i was like 10 and just playing all of these games that's insane yeah i remember cut the rope and i was too poor to actually buy the game the angry birds was at the number one spot on the app store charts at this time most apps that hit number one had a good two week run of glory and then fell into obscurity but not Angry Birds, which stayed at the top for 275 days. The game exceeded expectations for the team in no time, quickly becoming their first and only profitable and popular title. Globally, people were talking about Angry Birds. Practically overnight, children, mums, grandmas were all playing this simple yet addictive game. It didn't just take the US by storm, oh no, it took the entire world by storm. As the upward trajectory continued, Angry Birds became more than a game. It was a true cultural phenomenon. It's always merchandising as well. Merchandising will just always make so much more money than the, than the original product. I think like Simpsons merchandise and Minions merchandise, that, that's why they nailed it because they didn't have an original concept. They just had a very marketable character. I mean, he's even, he's even shaped like a Minion. There wasn't a single individual, young or old, who wasn't aware of the game or who couldn't immediately recognize one of the characters. Merchandise was flying off of the shelves. Yeah. Suddenly, every kid was sporting Angry Birds apparel and begging their parents. So Five Nights at Freddy's. It's it's like four animatronics, or is it five? I forget, but like they're, they're incredibly recognizable, just so easily marketable. Parents for the plushies. The once mobile game snowballed into a franchise that the small Finnish company never could have dreamed of. Angry Birds was the coolest and most relevant brand for many outright defining the early 2010s. They needed to focus on building a global brand. I like that. How do we build a brand? Do we uh, network, outreach, outsourcing, get into uh, countries that are only recently getting access to the internet, like India? Uh, no, we're going to change it to entertainment because we're about everything. That'll be, that'll be uh, $2 million for that rebrand, by the way. They needed to build an Angry Birds universe. It took Angry Birds three years from 2009 to 2012 to hit 1 billion downloads. In 2014, just two years later, Angry Birds hit 2 billion downloads. Pyro, I just ate so many cookies, I'm about to vomit, please help. Just eat more, finish the job. If you had access to a phone in the early 2010s, you'll know the titles. 
Angry Birds Seasons, Angry Birds Rio, Angry Birds Friends. Is that a movie time with like the actual Rio? Angry Birds Space, Star Wars. It just yeah, I, I just remember there was so much Angry Birds slop. There was so much slop. Like if you could look into anything related to Angry Birds and there'd be like nine games. Just kept going. The game was growing in popularity and the brand was expanding. The global popularity was so massive that they even built a theme park in central China. Oh my Although god. Was a nine billion dollar business, why couldn't Angry Birds be the same? The founders leaned all in. Needless to say, the brand had become a cash cow, the likes of which had never The genius thing is all you need to do is have a character that's marketable to like little little babies on their iPads. Little babies and wine mums. That's why like games like uh Gem, uh you know those like match three games? What are they called? I forget. There's like sweet gem or something. But they 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 literally just prey on like middle-aged wine mums and they just make them so much money. In 2012, they had made $195 million in revenue. They were becoming the unstoppable brand that everyone expected them to be. But there was a lot more going on below the surface. Cracks were forming, which eventually led to the downfall of the- Candy Crush. That's brand. it, Candy Crush. While the Angry Birds craze was taking over the globe, a less hopeful picture was emerging. A company that was so focused. Oh, uh, is that fucking hell? I'm being psy up, bro. I thought I thought that was a Wojak down there for some reason. I hate this a so company much. That was so I hate this so much. On milking a franchise that they forgot what made them popular in the first place: good games. For example, in 2012, during the peak of Angry Birds fever, Rovio released a new game, The Amazing Alex. It was a mobile game focused around puzzles and physics, a concept that was not too dissimilar to Angry Birds. The game failed to gain any noteworthy success. There's just no There's a reason that you never heard of it. There's no mascots. There's no mascots. You need like a wholesome chungus mascot and there was nothing. Just this pipes. was indicative of the company's true success potential. Game number 52, Angry Birds, was the smash hit of all smash hits. That must be so horrible, though, being stuck in that loop of, like, one thing made you famous, so you need to, like, stick with it forever. It must feel so, like, what, what's the word, claustrophobic? I don't know. But yeah, I, I've seen that so many cases. But game number 53, a boring, uninspiring fa- I mean, look at that avatar, like, who cares? Who cares about that character? Oh my god. White child with le hair. I- he's so recognizable, like Luke Skywalker. Failure, just like games number 1 to 51 that the company had released. Were they a team of experts who finally cracked the code for making the perfect game and franchise? Or- Says the dude who made MLG videos, I moved on, I broke out my spot, shut up. What? Were they a team that got exceptionally Ugh. lucky with just one game? Well, Angry Birds kept releasing more games. Just epic. They really ran out of titles there if they just called a game epic. And each game- What should we call the next one? Epic. And then the one after that? Based. Increasingly less original, less creative, and less adored than the one prior. For example, the team released Angry Birds Transformers, which was a bizarre side-scroller game that begged for microtransactions every step of the way. I mean, that's that's every mobile game, to be fair. Every mobile game does that. When you download a mobile game, you're basically playing a demo because you will hit a wall so quickly. You know, I hate so. I remember playing mobile games when I was like 10, and I hated it so much. I remember playing Clash of Clans and how you had like an energy bar. It's like, oh, your workers are too tired. You need to refill their energy. Five dollars, please. Yeah, I actually cannot stand free-to-play games. I think there's a saying about the internet where it's like if everyone paid, if everyone in the world paid $5, then the internet would basically be free. There'd be no ads, no mid-rolls, uh, no, nothing like that. No cookies that track your data and sell it to advertisers. Failing to make any meaningful returns. A similar story can be said for Angry Birds Fight, which was a clear and obvious ripoff of Candy Crush, but with Angry Birds... Literally Angry Birds Japan. Angry Birds, sad face. Angry Birds Japan, happy face. In addition, the same can be said for Angry Birds Go, which was a lackluster Mario Kart ripoff. The games were getting worse, and the fans were getting increasingly bored. It became clear that- No, no, the fans were not getting bored. Angry Birds did not have fans. You mean the seven-year-olds were becoming eight-year-olds, and they and they moved on to watching, like, Mr. Beast or TikTok? There never were fans of franchises like this. It's just it gripped an age bracket of little baby children, and then they grew up, and then they couldn't grip the next- it, It's- okay, so th this is how YouTube works, right? For example, every year, 
people will stop watching you and then every year a new wave of like summer kids come along like, like, like kids that get access to the internet for like the first time right and that's usually how youtube works that's why you'll have you'll have a youtuber for years that will still get consistent views like me because every year a new wave of people come onto the platform when you see a YouTuber that starts to fall off and get less views. That's because the new wave of kids aren't interested in the content. Now, obviously with YouTube, there's definitely a bigger exception because you can actually get a following of people because they watch you for you. That's why like I, I, I've seen meet and greets with like syndicate and stuff and he'll, he'll have people that like used to watch him when they were like, uh, I don't know, like 12. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people in chat here have actually been watching me for, for years on and off. But, th but that is like a, that's a, that's a saying for a lot of companies, how it's like, you need to keep getting a hold of the next wave of summer kids. I've been watching since I was four. You're probably five now. Oldest power viewer. One clear focus for the company hoping to IPO. Pump out as many gaming titles that have the name Angry Birds attached to it, all in an effort to milk more money through sales and merchandising. The company quickly found themselves in a bad place after the new titles absolutely underwhelmed and underperformed. 52%. Damn, I, I do feel bad for them because it's like, there's not really anything they can do. It's like Fortnite right now. Fortnite's dying, but like, there's nothing they can do. It, it, everything kind of runs its course. You can keep reinventing stuff, but like, it only goes so far. And then unfortunately, what happens is a company or an entity or a person will steal your format, refine it in a way that you couldn't, and then everyone moves over to it. It, it. It's like, look at TikTok now. TikTok is basically the biggest social media platform on the planet. And it's not even original. They just stole from Musical.ly. They stole from Vine. That's all they did. And then they just did some tweaking to the algorithm. It's never about re... Everyone seems to think it's about reinventing the wheel, but it's not. It's just slightly altering it. That's all you gotta do. In 2014, Rovio laid off 110 employees, which was around 15% of their- what, what these guys are doing is totally wrong because they're not trying to refine what they've already got. They're trying to reinvent the wheel, like with the Mario Kart stuff. Like, like, no no eight-year-old on Mummy's iPad while she was wine coping wanted a Mario Kart game. They wanted Angry Birds. And the collabs they were doing as well was just like such obvious, such an obvious attempt to like leech onto another fan base. Boring titles and failure to properly evolve with the ever-changing internet led the once cool brand to become rapidly uncool. This dramatically impacted merchandise sales as well, which was the most devastating for the company. Even with funded studios that were solely responsible for creating brand new original concepts, absolutely nothing gained momentum. The team had struck gold with Angry Birds, a phenomenon they were unable to replicate. The only Cold. strategy they could rely on was milking the brand for absolutely everything it was worth hoping that miraculously they'd regain a fan base. Thing is, their foundation doesn't work, right? It's it's crumbling. Why are they adding more like paint onto the house? Wow, that was a good analogy. Holy shit. You can tell I went to school for a little bit. Why are they trying to expand a universe when their core foundation doesn't work? What Disney did, they started off with uh, a lot of, probably now looking back on it, racist characters, but they built such a huge catalog that if one failed, they could just go to the next. There are so many Disney characters that no one really even knows about. And then, you know, Disney are basically at this point now where they're too big to fail because they're just like gobbling up other companies. Like they bought Fox recently, didn't they? The past couple years. Fox is huge. The only big entertainment company in the West that's left is like Warner Brothers, I think. That's it. I, I genuinely think that's it. Oh, sorry. Amazon Studios with Rings of Power. My bad. I forgot about that one. That one that's actually saving cinema right now. By the mid-2010s, the relevance of Angry Birds was a mere fraction of what it was just a few years prior. From 2014 to 2015, merchandise sales had fallen by 43%. Rovio had to fire an additional 260 employees. Oh my god. around a mobile game will only be cool, quirky, and unique for so long. In order to sustain success, you have to build new success. Disney didn't just try to coast off. Hang on a minute. I just talked about Disney. Is this guy listening in? Is this guy listening in? Hang on a minute. Mickey Mouse's successful debut for 80 years, building nothing praiseworthy in the time between. No. Disney built an empire by having Mickey Mouse in multiple unique, original titles that were all widely beloved. It's out with Ubisoft, for example, right? Like Ubisoft, they had uh, Rayman as their mascot because Rayman was really marketable. And then they ditched him like little wriggly, wormy cowards. And then they picked up the Rabbids because the Rabbids were just basically like minions, but before minions. But to be fair, Ubisoft is actually falling off right now. This is a strategy that Rovio was unable to execute. Instead, they only had one strategy to rely on. Have a splash hit with a 
Wait, Instead is that a Batman meme? Uma Gerd. Is that, is that, that's a fucking Uma Gerd meme. Uma Gerd, a bomb. Okay, maybe this company should be shut down though, like for real. He had one strategy to rely on. Have a splash hit that's a so, that sucks. Game, then try to coast off its popularity for as long as you can. This it's Finnish? No, it's the Uma Gerd meme. You know that, you know the Uma Gerd meme, you idiot? No, it's this one with the girl. Look, I bet you I can find it right now with Batman. There, 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 literally there. It just doesn't have the impact on it. This is a strategy that simply can't last more than a few years, which is what we saw with Angry Birds. Chat, what, what is the most popular marketable mascot right now? Don't say minions, because it isn't minions. I don't even mean that as a snide, like it's not minions. Among Us, okay. Okay, unironically, it might be Among Us. That, that I was not thinking of Among Us. Pikachu, yeah, true. True. So true. Train wrecks. Cocaine. Yeah, I... Cappy bat. Shut up. No, it's, it's, like, it's like something a company made. Superman? Uh, probably not really. I'm thinking about something that appeals to, like, like China and stuff as well, not just the West. I wonder if Among Us is in China. Probably. Among Us is probably one of the biggest ones, though, because it's so simple to draw. It's a little spaceman guy. A novel concept it was in 2010. Bro, there was so much Among Us art when, when the game came out. Holy shit. As the company was tanking, they did receive their saving grace in 2016, the Angry Birds movie. Thanks to the animated movie appeal for kids, as well as a star-studded cast with faces like Bill Hader and Danny McBride, the Bill Hader? They got Bill- they got Barry in it? Oh my god. The movie did quite well, earning $352 million against a $73 million budget. That's really good. That is really good. I'm actually surprised the budget was that small for an animated film. The second movie, however, released in 2019, no. earned $152 million, It's over. Less than half of what the first movie made. Also, in 2019, the company potentially put the nail in the coffin of any hope for regaining success. They made one of the biggest possible mistakes, which dramatically put off the few remaining loyal fans of the franchise. They had removed the old Angry Birds games from mobile phones without any warning. Uh. This means that if you had an Angry Birds game on an older device, suddenly, one day, you were completely unable to play it. It's uh. not a company was in shambles, only barely hanging on to a small bump in popularity thanks to a successful first movie. Now, their only hope towards profitability was pushing fans to their newer, more lucrative games. I love when games do this, by the way, when companies do this, when they unlist the original game to get you to buy, like, the more recent ones. And it just, like, you do actually, like, fuck over your diehard fans. Like, Dark Souls did it. They re they unlisted the original Dark Souls on Steam. You can't get that anymore. You gotta buy the, the, the shitty remastered one where people could get into your PC and put, like, a rat on there. They did it with Skyrim as well. Skyrim, the original Skyrim got removed, uh, unlisted off of Steam, so you had to buy the enhanced one. And that was the worst thing Bethesda did. Do you know how many mods I had on, on OG Skyrim that weren't compatible with the remaster edition? That stopped me playing Skyrim. The fact that they did that. And Dead Island. Yeah, Dead, Dead, Dead Island was kind of mid anyway, though, to be fair. Thank you, Dumbledore, for joining. <laughs> and there, 500 points to Slytherin for taking off Dark Souls on Steam. Microtransactions. This was just one more misstep from a company that had failed to do anything right by their fan base. After intense backlash from the now small Angry Birds community, they released an apology. What mods? I don't know, I forgot. Dear fans, the old Angry Birds games are some of the most loved, downloaded, and known games in the world. We know. We're so proud to have made them, and we are over- <laughs> Harry Potter! Did you put no games into the PlayStation of 5? Overwhelmingly happy that they've meant so much to you. But then, we took- I will give one point to Slytherin for every Slytherin house member that has a well-wrote character arc. Zero points to Slytherin. ...them out of circulation and didn't say anything, and that let you down. Not cool. Sl Slytherin, Slytherin uh, house members be like, I'm a bully, and that's it. That's it. We promise our heart was in the right place. We wanted to focus on building new and even better games to serve our players in the best possible way going forward. Now, Rovio is doing the only thing left to do for a dying franchise. They're re-releasing the original Angry Birds for devices and consoles. At this point, 
The only hope for the company is in relying on the nostalgia factor. How Netflix lost everything and you got Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey wasn't even convicted, was he? But yeah, reputation just still completely ruined. Harry Potter! I will give one point to Gryffindor for every game the PlayStation 5 has, with the exception of Astro's Playhouse. <laughs> Zero points to Gryffindor. You know what I should do? I should buy a PlayStation 5 for every game the PS5 has. So I'm not going to buy one. Message for the amount of games there are on the PS5, but I actually have already sent more than two. 